Knicks at home. Second of a three-game homestand against the Orlando Magic. And once again, we find ourselves in a hole. Knicks take a five-point lead in the fourth quarter. But could not close the door because timely turn untimely turnovers and just lousy decision making in crunch time Knicks just folded man questionable substitution patterns by the coach and the Knicks would fall 104 to 98 I'm I'm sick of the starters right now because they they just have no life no energy, completely unathletic. They play uninspired basketball. The leader of the team is not playing well. So, so I'm down about that. Then my guy Burks turns it all the way up at Madison Square Garden. 13 of his 15 points in the fourth quarter, doing his best to keep us from embarrassment. But it was all for naught. You can only ask this unit, this second unit, so much to bring you back into the games. The ineptitude of the starting five is a big problem for this team. To me, if anything, I'm taking my guy Burks out because there's no way you can expect him to go the whole fourth quarter and and four minutes and 30 went 16 straight minutes. If you're going to put the Rose back in, which I had no problem with, Leave Obi in the game. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't need the four guards there, Tips. I think you know the lack of or the lapse of defensive schemes when it counts, especially down the stretch, is a conversation, and it's worrisome. And we knew that the defense was going to take a little bit of a a, a suffer this season because our offense got better, right? But it's a drastic difference from last season, and. You know, defense is 30% scheme and 70% effort. And the schemes are there, but just doesn't seem any effort to execute them when it counts and in totality, right? And I think also there's this confusion on who actually is going to be on the court in the fourth quarter. Who's going to be that closing unit? Who's going to be the person who has the ball in their hand? Who's going to be the closer? And because you don't have that consistency, there's a lot of confusion every single time we get into the fourth. There's no ability for this team to develop any chemistry yeah. when it comes to a closing unit because we don't really have a set direction. This is not, you know, this, the bench is playing better than the starters. Okay, that's obvious. What are you guys going to do about it is the question. There's just a lot of things that are very concerning with this team, and it doesn't seem like it's getting consistently better. It looks like we have moments where we win, and it's like, okay, great. And then just as quickly as you won a game, you revert back to old ways. It doesn't look like we're formulating any conducive habits yeah. for winning and winning consistently. You can't defend home court. You're in serious trouble. We had no chemistry. We had no one knew their role. Nobody knew like, okay, exactly. you know what I'm saying? And, and then people are looking at Julius. Julius, Julius is playing hot potato with it. He don't want to take no shots. So it was just helped to skelter in the end man we we just had no flow no continuity we we were lost we were completely lost but again that just puts it back to that starting unit because ideally those are the guys that you want to be closing with or at least have a, a unit that you know you're going to close with on a nightly basis right now it's just uh it's kind of like a gift and the curse that lineup that we had that was Emmanuel quickly Alec Burks RJ Barrett um Obi Toppin and Mitchell Robinson that was the lineup I wanted to close with cuz that was the lineup where a, we had the most energy, and B, that was the line that took the lead back when the entire game, we're forcing up shots. People are yeah. playing hot potato with the ball. I'm seeing the starting lineup playing hot potato with the ball. Nobody wants to be that go-getter until your boy Alec Burks decided to be the one to go and get those buckets when we need the buckets. You know what I mean? So when we saw that lineup go out there, it, it, it felt fluid. It felt like the energy was up, the garden was live, as well as we were, the offense was moving. RJ Barrett looked a lot better. Mitchell Robinson, two starters. Looked like they had way more energy in those few minutes than they did the entire yeah. game. And that tells you a lot. Um, I think my frustration lies more in the fact that we we started something on Monday and we didn't continue with that. Going to Ashley's point, the continuity is definitely not there. We can't show that we are willing to place, um, you know, certain players with other players and then come into this day to this game where we're still waiting till the two minute mark to put the bench out there when we know the, the starters aren't giving us anything like we, we, we keep doing that every third quarter. And that's why we have the third quarter of doom. 
We're shooting ourselves in the foot. Mm. Halftime comes. After halftime, third quarter of doom. Starters go back in there, play a majority of the minutes. Although I'll give Tibbs some credit for this one. He started to pull guys early, although I think he left Randall Witt in there way too long. He left him in there until like two, minutes. The entire third quarter, damn near, bro. Yeah. Think, right. What yeah, is the point? Yeah, essentially. And yeah, it made no sense. What and was all the point? Randall was doing was, it made no sense. All he was doing was chucking threes. He had 10 yeah. three-pointers. Took 11 shots today. 10 of them were threes. It makes absolutely the no entire sense. entire third quarter, forward. bro. Good, good. Makes no sense. And then, it, once again, second unit has to come back in. Your boy Burks comes in, quickly starts getting it going. Rose starts getting it going. Obi Toppin gets it goes, going. Mitch is in there playing really good defense, getting some wobs. RJ comes in there as well. You start seeing that unit, the lineup that CK was talking about. We got quickly RJ, Mitch, Top and Burks, it was on fire. Then we bring in Randall again, and he just slows everything down. And I'm going to put this game, honestly, on Randall. There were matchups that he should have taken advantage of. You're on Wendell Carter Jr. You're a second All-NBA team. Like, what are you doing? Like, go down in the bank and body this kid. You got Mo Bamba, who you're afraid of? Who are you afraid of on this team? I always talk about where are our advantages? Like, what are the advantages that we are creating that is making opposing defenses have to rotate? Is it the pick and roll? We don't run any of that. Is it the dribble drive? Well, our point guard's not giving us that. And this year, Julius isn't giving us that. And those two guys have the ball in their hands the most on this offense. And it's all dancing around the perimeter it's all mm. you know with with Kemba it's you know running off the screens chucking up the three running off the screen hitting the settling for the mid-range Julius it's it's isolation off of the elbow and it's stagnating the entire offense it is stagnating the entire offense one of the best sequences we had in that game was when RJ had the ball in his hands he had he had one where he had to run in the lane and then got Mitch on the Gotham lob the one-handed Gotham lob and then after that, he didn't see the ball for like another five possessions. He didn't even touch the ball. We got to be able to mix it up, man. We're settling for way too many three-point shots. We were 16 of 49 from three tonight. 16 of 49. But we in trouble. And I got some numbers to back that up. <laughs> like... It's not just with Randall. It's with that thought in five collectively. Like that could collectively, that thought in five has three of the worst plus minuses in the NBA. And I keep telling y'all, I called in on Monday and I said the East is better. Even though Orlando's a joke, they are better. And I, I mean, I'm not trying to say that. That's not that gives no excuse for what happened. But we are in trouble because collectively, we don't have the defense. We don't got the wing players to deal with long, long, lengthy players. Yeah. But I like we in trouble collectively. Oh, like. Randall's mi minus 67, Kemba's minus 107. The reason why we're in trouble is not because we don't have the, the kids. The kids is on the roster. The kids, it's not, but we got the coach that don't play the kids. It's just a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. So that's all in five. I don't, I don't, I, we gotta, we gotta fix that. It's gotta change. Something's gotta happen, man. Um, uh, we still have mileage left. Um, we can see when we can win. There's some great talent on the team. I don't think it's a talent issue. I don't think it's a kids issue. It's definitely a chemistry problem. Um, I, I don't put it all on Sibs. With all due respect to the panelists, I don't put it all on the players. You win as a team, you lose as a team. Now, what I do see top three things to consider, and I'm just saying considering, I might get some tomatoes for this, mm. is one, do you bring um, Kemba <laughs> off the bench, not because he's a bad player, but because what we need is we need that table setting if you look at Rose as a high school player, he used to be more of a table setter than a scorer, and, and he can run with RJ. Now, the state, this leads to the second point. Someone is, if I was 6'9", and I was the size of Randall, I don't know why I'm not hitting that rim, like going, attacking that rim. Well, RJ and, and, and Randall need to attack that rim like they need it, and that will open up the shooting opportunity for someone like Fournier. Fournier is not going to be a hustle player. like He's not going to get banged up down low. He needs to get silky, curling shot to the three. So that's number two. And number three is look, the starting plus, uh, plus minus is, is terrible. So mm -hmm. with respect to that, um, I, I do think we need to tweak that starting five. It, it's not currently working, and it's not anyone's particular fault. I think it's a chemistry factor there. And uh, look, you saw IQ and Burke. They work in the backcourt lead in the second unit. IQ is growing. You've got to give him that opportunity. It doesn't mean Kemba doesn't have minutes. I'm just saying 
That third quarter, I was like praying to God, what, what's going to happen in that third quarter? You see it. You get punched in the face every third quarter. So does that mean that we kick off the third quarter with IQ and Burks and, and, and roll that out to get that scoring punched? <laughs>